Welcome back. You're watching the CNBC TV 18 special. NASCOM has launched its Accelerate 10X program. We're in conversation with Rishad Premji and Devjani Ghosh. I want to talk about uh, one of the big concerns that uh, uh, that India has or the government uh, faces as well is that what is this going to mean in terms of redundancy? So what does it do to the current state of play when it comes to jobs and what is it going to mean in terms of creating future jobs? And I know that NASCOM has done uh, studies on the fact that almost what about 20-25% of the current jobs will be redundant over the next few years. In fact that might be an underestimation the way that we're seeing technology evolve. So, how is this going to change the job market and the job scenario for India? I think every change, if you look back into history, has created opportunity in a different shape and form, right? The jobs that existed at one point in time were not relevant going forward. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, Anna shared a story about how the public sector banks were so upset when computers first came about because they said mm -hmm. that jobs would go away because yeah. computers would take those jobs, right? So I, I'm a huge believer that every change creates new opportunity. The nature of that opportunity looks different and the capabilities and the skills required mm -hmm. to participate in that opportunity look very different, right? So that's exactly why this major future skills initiative, which to me is the flagship, one of the flagship programs that we're driving at NASCOM, which is mm. how do we reskill 2 million of the 4 million people that work in the industry because mm. some of the skills that they perhaps have today may not be relevant in yeah. the future, but how can you reskill them to be capable of certain things that will be relevant going forward? Mm -hmm. So I'm very hopeful again that with, as with every change, we'll be able to shift and we're going to be proactive about helping people shift. Yeah, one is the transition, Devjani, of getting two out of the four million to actually make the change to the new skill set that's required. But what happens to the four million and being able to increase that pipeline? Uh, and we have seen over the last few years that there has been a decoupling. So while revenue may have grown, it doesn't necessarily mean that hiring has, uh, has sort of grown proportionally as well. So what should we realistically then expect? Because this is one of those sectors that has driven hiring in India. India and skilled hiring in India. Yeah, well, we are definitely going to see growth in hiring. It, the rate of growth may be different from what we used to see earlier. And you have to keep in mind this industry is transforming. You know, it's, it's, it's with the technology coming in, the nature of this industry is also changing. So the rate of growth may look different from what it used to look. But we are definitely going to see hiring happening. In fact, we've just come out with. Uh, some data to show the numbers that will get added over the next few years. Mm. Uh, but the kind of jobs and the kind of skills that will be needed will be very different and we we'll keep reinforcing that point because it's, it's going to be crucial. It's going to be important for the success of this industry. Mm. Uh, the skills needed for success and for these new jobs that are getting created is going to be very different from what the skills that this industry uses today. And we have to ensure that that skill pipeline is ready. Mm. I, I really think that's the biggest challenge ahead of us. The, the other thing, Shireen, I would add is the startups, mm. I think, will be the next wave of job creators as well, right? Mm. We always talk about the IT services, sure. that's the, yeah. the tonality of the question. Yeah. Yeah. But the reality is that if you ask me over the next 10 to 15 years, mm. in terms of brand building, mm. in terms of wealth creation, in terms of job creation, I think the startups will do for India what the IT services companies have done over the last 15 to 20 years. And mm. efforts like the ones we're talking about with Accelerate NX, with the broader 10,000 startup initiative, mm. I think are key players in driving that agenda, which is both yeah. Company building and as well as nation building. Well, the scale happens. Right. It will automatically result yeah. in more yeah. jobs. You know, how uh, important is global collaboration going to be? And is that going to be something that this program will focus on? Because as we look at products that address global markets, uh, A, market access is an issue, but B, uh, you know, you don't really have that much uh, lead time, so to speak. So, how important is it going to be to have those global collaborations uh, absolutely. Uh, on I the table? Absolutely. I think you should think, Shireen, in terms of the ecosystem on a global basis. Mm. So we should not think of the ecosystem restricted to India. Absolutely, partnerships with global accelerators, global money, global capability building, mm. all of that I think is going to be Even very academia. important. Sorry? Even academia. Absolutely. So what are they telling you when you talk to global uh, tech firms today uh, and pitch the idea of uh, Accelerate 10x, what is the ask on their part? And especially, do you find that there, there continues to be a concern on the innovation front? Because if you look at, you know, specifically from a U.S. perspective, uh, there's always been a question mark on India's innovation quotient, or at least as far as our uh, IP uh, laws are concerned. 
perhaps not legitimate at all. Uh, but is that something that continues to be a cause for concern? So, frankly, when we pitched the when we pitched the 10x accelerate initiative to companies like Google, Microsoft, Facebook, <laughs> there were no concerns. They were tremendously yeah. Yeah. excited by the idea that this is about a focused initiative, focus on hundred of the best deep tech startups and take them to the next stage, right? So they were tremendously excited and today when we launched the program, we actually launched it with a number of partners mm. who had already signed up and we're looking at contribution in three pillars. One is the acceleration, second is the deep tech capability development and third is funding. And we have multiple partners signed up in each of these mm. already. So and what the numbers kind of are money going. are we talking about in terms of people so they, who they may have, have committed? So that's the beauty so of this initiative, right? it's not about the money they bring in they already have initiatives they already have programs we are bringing together all these initiatives the best of the people from mm. these industry to focus on this hundred startups that we, we curate we, we put together and ensure that these hundred get access to the best people to the best technology mm. to the best training across the entire ecosystem so it's, it's really not about the money they put right. in, but it's about coming together and joining hands to say all of us are going to put our efforts to make these hundred mm. uh, successful. So what's the next step from here on as far as the 10x program is concerned? Well, it's launched now, mm. right? So I mean, I think getting, so beginning on this process, identifying the companies that we think have the potential to get there bringing this ecosystem together, getting the mentors in place. Now the execution piece mm. actually begins to be on this journey where we can get to 100 companies mm. and getting those different any, pieces. Any specific areas that you may want to focus on in terms of specific problems that these companies are hoping to address? No, we yeah. don't want to be constraining, right? Mm. The objective yeah. is building 100 deep tech companies out of India that can solve problems across the government, mm. from yeah. country problems that are scaled, to company specific problems, but just having the ability to build those kinds of companies in India. Mm -hmm. That's the big focus today. Okay. Okay. We would love to see the next 100 global world class solutions, tech mm -hmm. solutions actually come from why India in the believe, next five why years. Why do you believe we haven't, I mean, you know, the, and you know this, you, you get asked this question a lot as well, and I'm sure you do, Rishad. Why don't we have an Indian Facebook and why don't we have an Indian Google and so on and so forth? That's not the question. The question is, uh, why do we not have companies that have been able to create world class solutions, world class products? There are a few, and we're hoping that, you know, given time and experience and expertise, we will see that go up significantly. But what's the biggest constraint? Yeah, I mean, mindset. Our, our, our approach to innovation is definitely a constraint and we've talked about this. We, we, you have to take big risks and that's where uh, some of the points which Rashad made about needing that patient capital, uh, ability to take the risks, ability to fail fast um, and start something new if you are failing. I think uh, that culture is still evolving in India. And that's going to be a very critical need for, for success, especially when we're talking about deep tech, when we're talking about innovation at scale. Mm. Uh, I honestly believe it's, it's about the mindset, and that mindset is changing. And with this kind of an effort where we get everyone together mm. to, to focus on driving that change, uh, I feel pretty good about mm. you know, making it happen. So okay. let's see. Uh, what what do you find most exciting, uh, Rishad? You know, we've gone from a sort of largely, I would say, uh, e-commerce driven startup ecosystem to now being much more product oriented as well, B2C businesses, B2B businesses. What do you find most interesting about the shift that we've seen uh, in the past decade itself? You know, I, both Devjani and I won the ET Startup Jury Awards mm. a couple mm. of months ago. And I have to say, and the, on that jury were a lot of people who are sort of veteran startup folks. and. All of us saw companies in that list that most of us hadn't heard of before mm. and were doing disruptively well. I mean, mm. it's scaling, getting to 80, 100, 200, 500 draws. So what's most exciting is you're starting to see companies now that are breaking out from being startups per se yeah. to actually becoming mini companies and that mm. have the potential to become large corporations in the next 10 to 15 years. So I'm very excited about the resilience that you see within entrepreneurs, the acceptability to fail, so mm. move on to the next thing or, the yeah. or pivot if that's required. 
But what's Capital the feed, being what, what's there? What's the feedback that you get? Because you know, I go back again to a conversation that I was having last night with Amitabh Kant and, and Ramesh Abhishek. And you know, the sense I get when I talk to startups is that they're not looking necessarily for incentives or tax ops. They're looking for predictability. They're looking for uh, an environment where uh, you know it's easier for them to do business. It's not having to deal with a tax notice, which takes up all of their time and takes away management bandwidth from what they really need to do. So, what's the feedback that you get on what the ecosystem? system is now looking for right. I think certainly the ecosystem is looking for an easier even playing keel as far as regulation is concerned but I think it's looking for lots of other things that we've talked about it's looking mm. for access to capital it's looking for people who are thinking long term it's looking for access to customers especially on the enterprise side where there are more and more startups coming in which is harder to access than yeah. the consumer side but perhaps is the future it's looking for lots of those kinds of things and I think you know I, I don't think they're looking for hand-holding no, I don't hear too yeah. many conversations yeah, exactly. about look we're not succeeding exactly. because yeah. the environment doesn't yeah. exist yeah. we're not succeeding because it's tough to succeed in yeah. business right and how do we enable that in certain areas is like for any other company so I you know I think we should stop at some level thinking yes. of the startups as a special needs yeah. Yeah. child yeah. because yeah. they're not exactly in fact, we did a survey before we launched this initiative and we were in discussion. We surveyed around 100 of our best startups to understand what do they need to get to the next stage, right? And the three big needs, 81% 80, or so said uh, patient capital, that's the biggest need. And they were very clear to reinforce that mm. it's patient capital mm. and not just funding. What is, what is patient today? Uh, long term? No, but five years, seven years, ten years? I don't, I mean, I don't what, think when you're talking about innovation, yeah. you should put those timelines. Mm. Because again, you, you sort of draw false boundaries, mm. right? You just have to have that willingness to take that risk. And if you believe in an idea, stay with it, mm. right? It may take less than five years, it may take more. But that, so that was the number one ask. The second ask was market access, uh, both in India and global. Mm. And the third ask was uh, deep skill, uh, deep tech capabilities mm. development, right? Access to technology, training, mentorship. So those are the three yeah. big asks we are we're hearing again and again. Well, I, as I said, I completely agree with you. So let me end then by asking you, so 2023, what is it that you hope to achieve by way of this program? No, I think if we can create 100 companies that are world class, both in terms of the impact that they have to their customers, the value that they create, I think we'll have done a great job. Okay, John. Same. Okay, well, we wish you the very best of luck and we do hope uh, that you can nurture those 100 companies and create many more Indian unicorns who service not just India, but the world. Appreciate you joining us here on the CNBC TV 18 special. Thanks very much Thank for you your time. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this special from all of us here for now. Goodbye and many thanks for watching.